Theater presents Jeffrey Hunter, Barbara Rush, and Mel Blanc. From Hollywood, the Mutual Broadcasting System presents Spunky, starring Jeffrey Hunter, Barbara Rush, and Mel Blanc. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Spunky, starring Jeffrey Hunter as dad, Barbara Rush as mom, and Mel Blank as Pete. <laughs> This is the story of a boy and his dog. A very unusual story about Spunky, the boy, and Pete, the dog. Spunky and his father and mother live in Pleasant Valley, population 4,998. Spunky's dad is in the real estate business. Spunky's in the second grade, and he has a most wonderful mother in all the world. Nothing unusual about this? Oh, but there is. For you see, Pete, the dog, can talk. Why are you waiting for me after school, Pete? You don't usually do that. Well, there's a reason, kid. See, I picked up some hot dirt this afternoon. What do you mean? Well, I might be able to help your father pick up a fast couple of bucks. Now, maybe then you could have that new two-wheel bike you've been wanting. Gee, tell me all about it. Well, it's easy, kid, uh, but uh, I ain't no amateur, you know. I, uh, I work for a fee. You rustle me up a good thick bone and I'll spill the whole thing. Is it good, Pete? Well, um, it'll do. Hey, this must have been your father's. He never leaves any meat. Oh, you through, fella? Oh, don't call me fella. Sounds condescending. No, I'm not through. I I'm supposed to bury it, you know. Oh, that's right. Why, Pete? <laughs> Darn if I know. Matter of keeping up with the rovers and sports, I guess. Oh, excuse me, Spunky. I'll be right back. Spunky, come in and change your clothes right away. Well, in a minute, Mom. Pete says he has something important to tell me. Oh, Spunky, you're not going to start that again, are you? About Pete talking? But it's true, Mom. And maybe I can get my bike. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's a long way off, son. Now you hurry in here and get your clothes changed. Then you can go out and play again. Okay, Mom. <laughs> Did you bury it good, Pete? Yeah, but uh, I'll never find it again, though. My scent ain't so hot. It must be my sinuses. What was it you were going to tell me? Oh, yeah, I was going... To... <coughs> Whoops. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Lamb does that to me. <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, oh, yes, yes, your father. I was roaming around the other side of town this morning, and I ran into that collie friend of yours. Uh, you know the one. You mean Nicky? Yeah, yeah, that's him. Well, he's owned by the wealthy Van Owens. Well, he overheard his master saying that they were interested in buying that old farmhouse down by the river. Gee, nobody had lived there. Well, they want to fix it up and make a summer theater out of it. That doesn't mean anything to Dad. The barn's owned by Mr. Titus, the other real estate man. Look, kid, you're growing up. Where's your brains? Don't you get it? No, Pete, I'm afraid not. Well, I'll be pointing. Get your father to buy it under someone else's name from old man Titus. Then he can name his own price. Spunky, I'm not going to call you again. Okay, Mom. Gee, Pete, is that honest? Certainly. Well, I have to scram. The newspaper boy's coming. <laughs> I'm supposed to go out and bark at him. Hello, family. What's for dinner? Now, that's a fine greeting. Hello, what's for dinner? Oh, well, how's this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Much better. And my great big spunky, how are you, son? Swell, Dad. Good boy. See, Dad, I know how you can make some money. And then maybe I could get my two-wheeler. Well, that's very interesting, Spunky. Uh, how soon will dinner be ready, dear? Oh, about 20 minutes. Oh, good. I'm absolutely starved. Uh, now then, what were you saying about your two-wheeler, Spunk? Pete was telling me how this afternoon. Pete was what? Oh, pay no attention, dear. He's off on one of those wild flights of fancy again. Oh, Pete was talking to you again, huh? Yes, Dad. And he heard something very interesting. Uh-oh. Oh, what's the matter, dear? Oh, the butter. Mr. Grubholzer forgot to put the butter in. Well, we can fix that. Spunky, you run up to Grubholzer's like a good boy and tell him he forgot the butter. 
Can I talk to you for a minute, Dad? Why, sure, Spunky. What is it? Well, you know the Van Owens on the other side of town. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, Pete was over this way that... Pete was over that way this afternoon, talking to their collie. And their collie told Pete that maybe the Van Owens were going to buy that old barn down the river and turn it into a summer theater. Oh, I see. But Pete says you should get someone else to buy it first because it's owned by Mr. Titus. That's right. Then you could sell it to the Van Owens and make some money. Then I could get my two-wheeler. Uh-huh. Well, well you, uh, you run along and get the butter, son. Okay. But think it over, huh, Dad? I most certainly will. Helen, where does that boy get these ideas? Darling, let's face face the facts. We have a boy who has an incredible imagination. He'll either turn into a famous author or or the biggest teller of stories since Baron Munchausen. It's up to us how we channel it. Yes, I suppose so, but knowing about Titus owning the place, it's... it's weird. Dad believes me. Well, keep punching, kid. Humans is hard to convince. Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter, Pete? Here comes Hoyman, that St. Bernard. What's wrong with that? Uh, You know, he got drummed out of the Swiss canine corps. They caught him drinking that medicine he carried around his neck. Gee, I think he's a nice dog. Well, I don't. I got a hunch he's subvoisive. He's trying to organize all the dogs here in Pleasant Valley. <laughs> well, uh, hello, Spunky, and uh, good old Pete. Uh, how Hi, are you? Helen. How's tricks? Oh, please, Spunky, I do not learn tricks. That's beneath my dignity. Oh, well, I only meant that... And how are you, Peter? Positively flushed with the joy of living. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, uh, Spunky, pardon, uh, I would like a word with Peter. Sure, go ahead. Uh, Pete, uh, when are you going to join our group? You are the last dog in town to join... Subversive, that's what it is. Uh, nine, nine, we're not subversive. We dogs all over the United States are organizing. Organizing? For what, Herman? Uh, we don't know yet. <laughs> uh, you know, Peter, uh, we were talking about you at the meeting Wednesday night. The members feel that you would make a good president. Yeah? Mm. Gee, uh, Pete, <laughs> imagine you, a president. Hey, how about that, huh? Well, uh, I'll think it over, Hyman. Uh. Uh Uh-oh, come on. Let's make like dogs. Why? why, What's the matter? Oh, we got a romp or something. Here comes Mr. Grubholzer. Oh, yeah. Well, but comes the revolution. Yeah. (laughs) Hello there, Spunky. Well, where have you been? Your mother called you twice. Oh, jeepers. I forgot. The butter. That's right. Here you are. Now, you better get along home with that right away. I'm afraid your mother's a bit put out. Yes, sir. (laughs) Oh, the dog's having a bit of a romp, eh? No, Mr. Grubholzer. They're only putting on an act for you. An act for me? Yes. They don't really want to run around like that. Tires them out. But they didn't want to let you down. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> they didn't want to let me down. <laughs> oh, you've got a great sense of humor, son. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they didn't want to let me down. Here, Pete. Come on, boy. <laughs> don't call me boy. It ain't dignified. Who knows, I might be president someday. Come on, let's hurry home. I'm in trouble, Pete. Do you think I could use your doghouse tonight? Well, sure, but you won't like it. It ain't been cleaned in over a week. And God bless Mommy and Daddy and help to make Spunky a very good boy. Amen. Amen. Now, perhaps you can tell us what happened on the way to Mr. Grubholzer's. Uh Uh-huh. It was Herman, the St. Bernard. What about Herman, son? He wants Pete to join his club. What? Herman's organizing all the dogs. They want Pete to be president. Pete isn't sure, though. He thinks Herman's subversive. Penny, for your thoughts, dear. Uh, Little monkey. Now, where do you suppose he picked up a word like subversive? (laughs) It's rather frightening, isn't it? Oh, he probably heard us using it, and it stuck in his mind. Oh, I guess so, but it it sounded so funny. You know, that big word coming from that little mouth. Hmm. I wonder. Wonder what? If it's just possible that Spunky heard something about that property down by the river. Oh, darling, how fantastic can you get? No, 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 I mean it. 
I'm discovering that little guy has pretty big ears. Well, you can rest assured that if he said Pete told him, oh, it's one of those balmy daydreams of his. Yes, but on the other hand, it's... No, by George, just for the heck of it, I'm going to do a little snooping the first thing in the morning. Well, hi. How are you, Raj? Uh, it couldn't be better, Dan. How's with you? Oh, muddling along. Oh, go on, sit down. Oh, thanks. Well, what brings you by our modest font of education? <clears throat> well, I have a bit of a problem. Okay, let's hear it. Well, now, you being head of the drama department here, I was wondering if you heard any rumors floating about that we're going to have a summer theater in Pleasant Valley. Well, yeah, but it was supposed to be very hush-hush until the plans were more concrete. Mm. Yeah, where'd you hear about this? Well, skip it, Dan. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. <laughs> Don't tell me you want to pursue the muse. Oh, me an actor? Oh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, but, but seriously, though, Dan, can you tell me any more about this deal? Well, I know you'll keep it under your hat, Rog. It goes like this. The Van Owens, you know... Don't know what to do with all their money, so they've decided to found a little theater to improve the cultural aspects of Pleasant Valley and the surrounding communities. Um, were they, uh, were they thinking of that old barn down by the river? Well, yeah. But who told you? My little boy, Spunky. Who told him? His dog, Pete. His dog. <laughs> well, I, I told you you wouldn't believe me. Well, <clears throat> so long, Dan. I've got to see a man about a barn. Uh, his dog. Ooh. Helen! Uh, Helen, honey, where are you? Oh, goodness, you gave me a start. Why, well, Roger, what are you doing home? Well, look, I haven't got time to explain that. Do me a favor, will you? Call your sister over in Newport and, and ask her if she'll get over here fast. Well, now, what on earth are you talking about? What do you want Phyllis for? Well, don't you see? Old man Titus doesn't know her. And she's going to be my secret agent. Secret agent? For what? We're buying the old barn down by the river. Everything Spunky says is true. Well, that's the story, and, and this is what I'd like you to do, Phil. I want you to pose as a prospective buyer for the property. Mm -hmm. Well, the old man hasn't had a nibble on it in years, and I'm sure we can get it for a song. Get him down as low as you can, and then flash this on him. $2,500. Tell him that's as high as you'll go, and when he sees this lovely green stuff, he'll jump through hoops. Are you ready, Phyllis? You mean I go to work right now? Well, you have to. If Titus gets wind of this little theater deal, I'll be out at least seven or $8,000. Okay. I hope I can play the part. Talking dogs. Mrs. Baker. Miss Baker. Uh, Miss Baker, you roused my curiosity. Now, why are you so interested in this barn? You see, it's been the family a long time. Frankly, there's a great deal of sentiment attached to it. Hmm, I'll bet. <clears throat> well, I'll be honest with you, Titus. I'm thinking of the place in terms of an art school, <clears throat> a haven for aspiring young painters. Yeah, oh, well, yes, oh, yes. I would be. Oh, look out for that board. Yes. Oh, you'd have a charming atmosphere for that sort of thing here. After an awful expensive amount of fixing up. <laughs> and I don't know. The timbers are solid, you see. Uh, well, well, you have a full acre fronting the river there. <laughs> no, sir. You cannot beat it for charm and atmosphere. Well, what are you asking for it as it, you should pardon the expression, stands? And don't get fancy. I know property values. Well, as I say, there's a lot of sentiment attached to this. But for such a worthy cause as you have in mind, I could add a great personal sacrifice to myself. Let it go at the ridiculous figure of uh, uh, 6,000. What? <laughs> oh, Titus, you couldn't get $6,000 for this rat trap if you discovered oil on it. I'll give you $1,600, and even that proves I've got a hole in my head. $1,600? Uh, <laughs> really, uh, joking, Miss Baker. Uh, $5,000, and I'm losing money. Look, Titus, I don't need your bucolic bungalow that bad. Here's my final offer, $2,500 in cash. Uh, the ca oh, you, oh, did you say cash? Is it all there, Miss Baker? To the last foolish uh, dollar. Is it a deal, Titus? Uh, it's a, it is a deal. Come, my dear Miss Baker, let's get back to my office, <laughs> and we'll draw up the papers. Oh, 
All right, kid. Everybody's seen me chase the ball and return it. We've established a point. Can we knock off for a while? Oh, sure, Pete. Hey, why did you meet me at school again today? Oh, oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Did you mention anything to your old man about the summer theater in that old barn by the river? Yes, I did, Pete. Oh, that's too bad. What did he say? He didn't say anything. Well, maybe it's all right then. You see, I was over playing with the Van Oven Owens collie again. And the collie says that the Van Owens changed their minds last night. Instead of the barn, they're going to buy that old abandoned schoolhouse out on Buttercup Road. Hey, you better tell your old man before he does something foolish. Gee, that means I won't get my two-wheeler. Oh, not necessarily, kid. Keep punching. Maybe your old man can get his finger in on the schoolhouse deal. Yeah, maybe you could. I really want you to get that two-wheeler, kid. You do, Pete? Why? Chasing balls? Uh Uh-uh. But cars? Bikes? That's like putting cream on the shortcake. I really get my jollies chasing after them beautiful spinning wheels. Uh Uh-oh, here come one now. See you later, kid. And away we go. Phyllis, how did it go? Tell me, Phyllis. Did you swing it? There you are, brother-in-law. No trouble at all. If you're sure that's what you want. Oh, what a woman. What a brain. You know, there are times when I honestly think I married the wrong woman. If this deal falls through, you'll have an opportunity to say that again. Aunt Phyllis! Well, just look how this boy's grown. Hello, Spunky dear. Hi, Mom. Dad, I was talking to Pete again this afternoon. Well, you go right ahead, son. You talk to good old Pete all you want. Gee, thanks, Dad. Well, Pete says to forget about the old barn. The Van Owens have changed their minds. Uh, what? what? They're going to buy that old schoolhouse on Buttercup Road instead. What's the matter, kid? Dad's pretty upset. What about them taking the schoolhouse instead of the barn? Oh, did old man Van Owens say that they was buying the schoolhouse? Uh-huh. Much cleaner and neater. Much cleaner and neater? Oh. Well, uh, I'll be seeing you, kid. I gotta go. Where, Beat? Uh, I've been thinking over that proposition of Herman's at St. Bernard. Uh, you know, about joining his group. I think today's as good a day as any to join. Yeah. Well, be seeing you, kid. <laughs> well, go on. I only have it with both barrels. A real high point in the astute business career of Roger Dalton. Oh, don't feel like that, Roger. We all have to gamble on business deals now and then. Certainly. It's not the end of the world. Oh, that's right. You know what? I bet we could work here in our spare time and fix it up. Oh, I'd love to live here by the river. We could even sell the other house and still come out ahead. Hey, bye, George. I think maybe... Uh, Spunky! Spunky, Spunky, are you all right? Uh, Spunky, where are you? Down here, Dad. I'm all right. Oh, are you sure you're all right, darling? Uh Uh-huh. I fell through the board, but I landed on something. Wait a minute. Here. Uh, There you are, son. Uh, Here, let me look you over. I'm not hurt, Dad. Uh, What's in the box? I don't know. Let's take a look. (gasps) Oh, let me see that. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, Phyllis, what is it? Talk to us. Don't worry about getting your investment back, Roger. Do you know what you've got here? Uh. Letters, valuable letters from the very hand and pen of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, What are you going to do with these letters, Roger? Well, uh, well, I'll I'll, I'll contact all the big national magazines. They'll go to the highest bidder. Well, that should be worth a small fortune. Oh, Roger, darling. Isn't it exciting? Hello. Yes, this is Dalton. Who? Uh, Mr. Van Owens. You've what? Changed your mind? Well, (laughs) well, what do you know about that? Well, that's fantastic. You what? Not a cent over 15,000. Oh, no, indeed, Mr. Van Owens. Yes, I'm sure we can get together. What is it, dear? Oh, get your checkbook, honey. We're going shopping. Shopping? For what? A year's supply of ground round for Pete and a new two-wheel bike for Spunky. 
Golly, Pete, look at it. Isn't it just keen? Oh, I can't wait to see them wheels going around. Oh, I love them spinning wheels. You know, Pete, I think you know something about how that schoolhouse got torn to pieces. I, uh, I ain't saying a word. Did you have anything to do with it, Pete? I am standing on my constitutional rights. Did you join that St. Bernard's group? Herman's outfit? Uh, yes. And like he said, uh, they made me president. And did you and all the other dogs have your meeting at the schoolhouse last night? Before Mr. Owens got there? I, uh, ain't saying a word. Do you still think Herman's group is subversive? Uh, no. But just between you and me, kid, we can sure be destructive. <laughs> And now, here are our stars, Jeffrey Hunter and Barbara Rush. Thank you, Larry Chatterton. It's always a pleasure for Barbara and me to appear on Family Theater. You know, many Family Theater listeners have written to tell us that they have begun the practice of daily family prayer in their own homes. Well, it, it's certainly heartwarming to know that our message is being heard and followed by people all over the country. But occasionally, someone writes to tell us that prayer is not as easy as it sounds, that it's difficult to pray. Well, I'd like to have Barbara read a little poem that may be of help to you if you feel that way too. It was written by James J. Metcalf, and it's called Time to Pray. Barbara? It's not difficult to pray when we are faced with fears or when the shadows climb the walls and tragedy appears. Our voices rise above the roar of every raging sea and words of sudden eloquence present our tearful plea. But when there is no storm and when we have a perfect day, we seldom turn our thoughts to God or take the time to pray. And if it is a duty then, it also is a task to thank him or to let him know the miracles we ask. And yet a daily prayer to God is such a little thing compared to all the comfort and the blessing it can bring. Thank you for being with us. And remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Spunky, starring Jeffrey Hunter, Barbara Rush, and Mel Blank. Others in our cast were Peter Votrian, Charlotte Lawrence, Jack Crucian, and Howard McNear. The script was written by Monty Masters, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Larry Chatterton expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home. I'd invite you to be with us again next week when Family Theater will present Home for Thanksgiving, starring Stephen McNally and Joan Leslie. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.